Alright, what is up guys? Tick here. I'm uh, bringing you some more Witcher 3. Um, but I thought this time I would bring you maybe a walkthrough or a tutorial of how to play Gwent. Uh, Gwent is the mini game within Witcher 3, the mini card game uh, within Witcher 3, uh, which is ridiculously addicting. I have lost a lot of time in this game uh, just by playing Gwent. Um, really addicting, a lot of fun. Uh, it's a good way to make money, particularly early in the game where money can be a little bit difficult to come by. Um, and... Um, I believe any main quest later on in the game, I haven't quite got there yet, but I believe there's a quest later in the game, the main story, that involves you having to beat um, a bunch of people in Gwent in order to, to, to progress the story. Um, so it's kind of a good idea for you to learn how to play it now, uh, build up a decent deck now, um, and I thought I would help you sh uh, show you guys um, how to do that. So let's get going here. Um, first of all, at its core, Gwent is a card game. Uh, that you play um, with a deck. Um, but you can pick one of four decks. Um, right now, you can see at the top, your deck is related to a faction. Uh, so there's four decks here. Um, I'm currently on the Northern Realms deck, or the Northern Realms faction. Um, this is like the starter deck that, that, that they give you um, when you start the game. It's actually a fairly decent deck to start the game off with, um, but I've added some decent cards to it as well. It's not quite as weak as the starter deck. Uh, it's for the decent starter deck anyway, but um, I have improved it a little bit. Um, all of the other decks in the game are here. The Nilfgaardian Empire, the Monsters faction, and then the Societal um, faction as well. Each deck gives you a bonus um, within the game. So the way Gwent works is um, you play against another person, uh, and that person can be... Um, either like a blacksmith or an innkeeper uh, or an armor or, or a merchant. Basically, anyone that you can trade with in The Witcher 3 pretty much plays Gwent with you. That's basically how it works. Um, as well as some of the bigger characters in the game, um, like um, the Bloody Baron. Uh, you can play Gwent against him as well. Um, and as you beat them um, in Gwent, you earn yourself an additional card off of them. And that is the prime way of how you can uh, build and strengthen your your decks. Um, the way Gwent works, and it'll make more sense once I show you some gameplay in a minute, um, is each match of Gwent that you play against another person is a best of three round. Uh, so the first person to win two rounds uh, wins the match, wins the money, uh, and wins a card if it's someone that you've beaten for the first time. Um, and so you want to use a deck that you're comfortable with. And obviously for these decks, I can't actually use them because I don't have enough cards in them. Um, you can see in the middle there it says number of unit cards 17 out of 22 uh so i don't have enough cards to play um with those decks this is the only one that i can actually use right now the cards on the left are cards that i have that are related to the deck and the cards on the right are all the cards in the deck itself and you can divide all of the cards in your deck to basically one of two types of cards you have your unit cards which are these three cards sets of cards here and then you have your special cards which are your weather related cards and your bonus cards here I'll quickly explain what they are. And again, these will make a lot more sense when you go into the game. Um, your unit cards all have a rating. So you can see these ones here are five. That's one has four, two, one, one. Uh, these, your unit cards all have um, a strength number. So this is how strong those particular cards are. Um, okay, so these, when you play these cards, these are how strong their attacks will be. And if you play a couple of them together, uh, they will obviously add... Together. So if I play all three of these cards, I can add 5 plus 5 plus 5 for a total strength of 15. Your unit cards are divided into three types. You have your close, co close combat cards, uh, which are all sort of have these sword images on them. You can see the, the yellow image on the, on the card. You have your range unit cards, which are these cards that have the crossbow on them. And then you have your siege cards, which are the ones that have like a catapult symbol on them as well. And you can play these cards on different parts of your board. So all your siege unit cards you're going to play together. All of your range unit cards you're going to play on the same row. And all of your close combat cards you're going to play on the same row as well. And they will add up their scores together uh, to give you a total score. And at the end of a round, if your score is larger than the enemy team's score, the enemy player's score, you will win that particular round. And that is where these special cards uh, come in as well. Your special cards basically are your weather cards. So you have your Biting Frost, which will reduce the effectiveness of your close range cards. Uh, so all the ones with the knife symbol on them, uh, your sword symbol on them, it will reduce 
are your close combat cards. Effectiveness. Your fog will reduce the effectiveness of your ranged combat cards or the cards that have a crossbow on them. And then the, your rain will affect this of your reduce the effectiveness of your siege combat cards. Uh, so these are pretty important cards to have. The catch with these cards is when you play them, they actually work against both teams. So if I were to play the Biting Frost card, I might reduce all of the enemy's close combat cards to, to the score of one, but it also reduces the effectiveness of my close combat cards as well. So that's where the strategy comes in as well. Sure, I can play this card now and reduce the enemy team's effectiveness of his close, close combat cards or his range cards, but I'm also hurting my team's effectiveness in those particular... Um, uh, units as well and that's where this card the clear weather card can becomes really really effective is this will remove all of the cards all, all of the weather effects on the board for a particular round as well so what we'll do is we'll get us into a game or two and we'll, we'll explain how this works but in this particular deck my northern realms deck i have 32 cards and in each match of gwent i am drawn uh 10 cards from this 32 so that's why I've left these two shitty cards out on the side here. Because what I want is I want my 10 cards to be my best uh, 32 cards. Um, that is really the best way to look at it. I believe if I were to eliminate some of these, yeah. So if I could take some of these cards out, I could still play. So what I might do is I might remove a Commander Horn. Yeah, that seems like a good, uh, good deck to go with. Um, so you're drawn 10 cards, and you have to make those 10 cards work in your best of three. So you can potentially play three rounds with those 10 cards. It's not much, and it becomes a bit of a tease. Um, uh, it's, it's quite challenging, but it's a lot of fun as well. That's where the strategy comes in as well. So let us get into a game. And what we'll do is I'll actually face this guy, this merchant here. So any merchants or innkeepers, like I said earlier, um, anyone who basically has a shop that you can trade and sell with, uh you can play Gwen with so we'll play with this guy and what you do is you set your bet uh so here we're pretty confident in our in our deck so we're going to set a pretty high bet 10 is the most that you can do right now hopefully you can bet a much more later on uh when you meet some better maybe some better players and maybe that'll allow you to bet more maybe make more uh so i'm gonna bet 10 and if i win i'm gonna double that and i'm gonna make 20 coin if i lose i lose 10 so pretty straightforward let's get into it wouldn't mind a few rounds of cards So here I get to choose my deck. So obviously because I only have one deck that I'm able to use. So if I try to use, say, the Nilf Guardian Empire, it won't let me. Bottom left, it says not enough cards, not enough cards. So I won't be able to do that. So we use a Northern Realms deck. We're pretty happy with the composition of our deck. And let's start. So we'll, we'll get drawn 10 cards first. And these 10 cards are the cards that we are going to have to use over the course of our three rounds. And to be honest, it's not a great, um, great, great draw. Basically the split here is one, two, three, four, five unit cards that can get me points. Then one, two, three, four, five special cards that can get me points. And what I like to, I like a divide of somewhere around, um, six and four, seven and three. I really like the seven, seven and three. So what we'll do is we will we have the ability at the beginning of each match to redraw two cards and right now i'm seeing that i have two commander horns uh don't worry about what they do right now i'll explain that later and then i have two biting frost cards as well so i'm going to do i'm going to maybe try and draw um one out of each of these so we'll draw this guy out we'll get another unit card which is good and we'll draw this one out and it looks like we got another unit card so that was pretty good too so let us start here as I said, this is the first of three potential rounds. It is a best of three. Um, and these are the different rows that I can play my cards in. So you can see by the symbol, this is my close combat row. This is my range row. This is my siege row. So if I were to play a close combat card like this one, it would go into this row. If I were to play a range combat, it would go into this row. If I were to play a siege card, it would go into this particular row itself. Um, what I like to do, especially at the beginning of a round... Um, at the beginning of a match is I like to use some of my lower cards first to see if I can entice the enemy to play some of his big cards right off the bat. So what he's done is he's played a relatively weak archer. So that will put two into his archer row and for a total of two for his entire team. 
What I'm going to do is I'm going to keep score with him and I'm going to play this guy who's my weakest card. And we'll go from there. Different cards will have different abilities. So, okay, so he's used the Fighting Frost card right off the bat, which will reduce the effectiveness of my close range card. So you can see this guy used to be a two. Now he's a one. But you can see it's also reduced the effectiveness of his range combat, his close range combat cards as well. So he doesn't have anything in there. But whatever he does put in there will only be, be equal to one. So if I were to play these cards, for example, right? Instead of this being worth five, this being worth five, and this being worth four, they would only be worth one. Okay. Um, I don't have a clear weather card to clear that effect either. So um, some interesting strategies. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to use a spy card. So that I means that this particular card is a spy. So what this card does is I can place it on his side of the board. So he will get points for this card, but I will actually draw two cards from my deck. Okay, so those two cards might help me. And because he's already used the Biting Frost card, it doesn't mean I'm going to give him five points. It means I'm only going to give him one. We'll go ahead and we'll use that. It'll go on his side of the board and then I will get two more cards, which is kind of nice. So he's got the lead on me now. He's up by four points to my one. So what I might do here, now that I have a relatively strong deck that I'm happy with, is I might concede this particular round. And the reason why I might want to do that is because he's down in cards, whereas I'm not. And I'm saving my cards. And he might have used a couple of his stronger cards already, even though it doesn't look like he has. These cards are relatively weak. Um, I'm wondering if I could maybe entice him to use another one. Um, what should I play? What should I play? So I have a couple of close range combat units here. Um, and while they're not that effective because Biting Frost is already being in play, I do have a Biting Frost card. So what I don't want to do is I don't want to be stuck in a position down the line where I'm relying on these cards to win me around, but then I have to play a Biting Frost card. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to use my Biting Frost card here um, just to get rid of it, and maybe that entices him to use another card. Let's see, let's put that down. Oh, so he's used a Spy card, so he's going to get two more cards here. And he's actually, he's now leading. So what I might do is I might just concede this particular round and give him um, that particular round. So what I do is I'll hold Y. And when you pass in a round, it basically means you cannot use any more cards in that round. So I will go ahead and do that now. Or should I play one more? Um, 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 I don't know what to do. I kind of feel like playing one more card. Maybe entice him to use... I have quite a few of these range cards here too. So I might use that one to see if he can maybe use up one more of his cards. And he does. Okay. So we'll hold there. We'll give him that particular round. So I've passed. And because he's in the lead, he's probably going to pass as well. So he's won that particular round. Alright. Let's start the next round. So because he won that round, he'll go first. And he's actually passed, which is really interesting. So he's realized that he doesn't have that many cards left. Well, he has seven, but he's probably realized that I'm trying to weaken his card total. So he's actually passed. So he's not playing any cards this particular round. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to play my weakest, which is this one. Now, do we want to... So I've got two range cards and I have two close combat cards. So it doesn't really matter which one I play. But I'll play this one. Which will put me in the lead 4 nothing on this particular round. And I'll pass. But my faction's ability, the Northern Realm's ability, is for me to draw a bonus card at the end of every round that I win. Uh, each faction has their own um, ability. Not really sure what the um, what their ability is. But I'm going to go ahead and pass. Win this round and then get another card. It'll tell you as well. So you've won the round. Next round's about to start. 
here's a bonus card because your faction has triggered your ability. And it's a good card too. It's a plus five. So F final round. So all I'll play for, I have eight cards ES7. So we might as well go and start with all of our strongest cards. So what I'm worried about is I've got a siege unit here and I've got a couple of range units here, but I've also got the weather cards that counter them. Um, so this could be a little bit problematic because like I said, these weather cards actually counter your cards as well as theirs. Um, let's keep going on for now though and see what happens. I'll explain that commander horn card in a second because I do want to use it. Uh, I'll go ahead and use that as well. So this Commander Horn is a pretty effective card. What it does is it doubles the strength of all the cards in a particular row. So if I were to play it here, my total in this row is 9. That would bump it up to 18. So it is a really, really effective card. The other thing I want to point you guys out to here is our leader cards. Each faction has one leader card that they can play. Um, so my leader card down here uh, will actually double the strength of all of my siege units. So I have a double the strength of any, which I can use on this one, which is the commander horn, and I have this one, which will double the strength of my siege units. So I'm sitting in a pretty strong position here, even with the fact that I have some of these damn weather cards as well. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the commander horn on my close combat and double that up. Okay. Now, do I want to use my leader here as well? I think I want to use my leader card here. Double up my siege units. All right, so he's used Torrential Rain, which blocks off my, um, which minimizes this, um, which reduces the effectiveness of my close combat. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to use my um, Torrential Rain card as well, hoping that he might have a clear weather card in his deck. Let's go, actually, you know what? Am I going to do that? No, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to... Yes, I am. Go ahead and do that as well. That card essentially is useless, but... If he doesn't have a clear weather card, it doesn't hurt us. So we'll go ahead and use this. We'll use both of our range cards. He's got one card left. Alright, so there you go. He's played his last card. So he's passed because he has no more cards. His total is 19. My total is 26. So automatic, automatically, I win. So I'm just going to go ahead and put this card down as well. And then we will go ahead and pass because you don't want to play that last card. We will win that third round. And we will win the match. So we received 20 crowns there. You can see on the left, 20 crowns and a parchment. Okay. So this guy looks like it's someone that we already beat before. Uh, if this is someone that I hadn't beaten before, he would have given me a bonus card for beating him. Which is a really good way to expand your deck in this game is by beating all of the players that you can play. When you beat them the first time, they will actually give you a um, a bonus card to add to your decks. Uh, so I hope that makes some sense. What I'll do is I'll play them again, and we'll speed things up a little bit. We'll cut the description and the explanation down a little bit so that you guys can get more familiar with it. Well, that's our deck there. We'll go ahead and start. Uh, here we go. Hopefully we get a good draw. Fairly good draw there. And we will get rid of this guy because he's our weakest one. And I think we'll hold on. Do we want to... Do I have range units? I have quite a few range units actually. And I don't want to get stuck like last round. So I might trade in the impenetrable fog as well. Alright. So we'll, use, we'll start off with the weak cards. 
Ooh, so he's coming out with the big ones too. That will give him a spy card. That'll give him an additional two cards on my side of the board. What I'll do is I will actually use my spy card here as well. That will give me two additional cards. Two that weren't great. I already got another another fog I didn't want to use. So he's using another card. So he's actually up to 12 cards now over my 10. And I would like to see him maybe use another. Or do I use my my horn here? Seven. That would take my total up to 24. I think I might do that. I think I might use my commander horn on this group. And then I might fold there and see if he wants to. Oh, that's a clever card. That is a really clever card. I'm still in the lead, but I don't want to use too many cards here. So I think I'm going to pass on this particular round. That might encourage him to use a big one big card just to win. Yeah, there we go. Okay. Nine cards each. He's up by one. Not a horrible position to be in. So let us use our siege unit here. Oh, he's clever. Clever with the countering cards. So we'll use a range one too. I'm assuming he's got he's got the fog as well. Which might be a bit of a problem. Yeah, he's got the fog as well. Need to win this round, so... Let's play this guy. I'm in a bit of a pickle here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use the Biting Frost to lower his score. And then I'm going to use this guy here to double up my bottom. That will add one, one score to all the ones next to him. So, I'm still up by one. So I kind of need him to fold here. I can't fold because he's going to be able to play um, a few cards and win. I really need to win this round. So... I use him. He's the lowest scoring card I have, so it doesn't really matter. Or do I use this? Hmm. Or do I use my leader card? I think I'm going to use my impenetrable fog. Just to waste the card. It won't have any effect, but what it might do, it will do is it'll encourage him to play one more card or fold. Uh, is that the smartest thing to do? No, it's not the smartest thing to do. The smartest thing to do would be to use my, my leader card. That will double the strength of my siege units, and I don't have any siege units left. Um, so it's no point for me holding onto that card heading into the next round. So let's go ahead and use it. Let him bump our score up to eight. And we'll see what he does. He might fold here. He does not. Interesting. But do I fold? Yeah, I think if I fold, I'm going to be okay here. Because the difference between me and him is now... Three points, and as long as he doesn't have a clear weather card, those two won't let him catch up. So, oh, you know what? I lied. I'm gonna get rid of this card because I'm scared it's gonna bite me in the ass. Let's use it. Yeah, so he's passed. There we go. So now I'm gonna fold and I'm gonna get another card because I'm in the Northern Realms faction, so I'm gonna have four cards to his two. And as long as one of his cards isn't fog. I'm going to be okay here. 
Alright, my turn. Let's start with this one. Yeah, so unless he has a monster card, I think that's pretty much game over. Oh, he did have a clear weather card. Strange that he used it now. There we go. We're up 10 to 2, and he has no more cards left, so I might as well just use these two cards. I could fold now and win, but why not just stick it to him? There we go. We won that round. We won the match. Happy days! So, like I said, you can go around and play Gwent against all sorts of different... Like, this guy here, he will play me as well. Is there a merchant? There he is. So he will play me... Oh, he will not play me. Most of them will. So most of the... Um, Take a peek if you most of the guys that trade or sell with you will play with you. And when you beat them for the first time, you will get a card. That is a good way to... Exp expand your deck Farewell. uh so i hope this video was helpful i hope this guy kind of this video kind of taught you guys about when how to play it some of the strategies that i like to employ um i really like to sort of give them the first round while trying to entice them to use some of their larger cards their better cards and then win over the next two rounds um yeah gwen's a lot of fun hope you guys enjoy the video um until the next one i will see you guys later